Okay. So, uh, so it's now we're look at bone masses of the lumbar spine. Uh, Eric, go ahead. Forty-six year old female with breast cancer, and there's a densely sclerotic mass in the right S1 vertebral body extending into the to the uh, to the right lateral aspect, and so it's uh, certainly we consider uh, metastatic disease. Yeah, it's a nice little target lesion. If you needed a target for your uh, dartboard, you'd got one here. Uh, there's no real periosteal reaction, and there's not a lot going on around this. The margins are very sharp, really. And uh, here's the bone scan. Yeah, the bone scan does show uh, a lack of, if anything, a little bit of photopenia, possibly, but, but no, no, uh, no increased activity at that location. Could yeah. still be, uh, look at a giant bone. Yeah, so th this just turned out to be a benign uh, lesion. They biopsied it. Uh, I, I don't. You know, I don't remember whether they biopsied it or, or just followed it. Oh, okay. Brian, are you on twice? Uh, uh, my connection is in and out. Oh, uh oh, okay. Well, while you're in, why don't you take this one? <laughs> Are you with us? I can't hear you, Brian. Sorry. Oh. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay, there's decreased signal in an L4 pedicle. So uh, this could be a chronic stress response or it could be a uh, astoid osteoma. Um, yeah, it was at two levels. Well, here it, it's at least these two levels. It actually turned out it's probably at three levels. Here's the CT. Okay, so yeah, this could be a chronic stress response. I mean, it doesn't yeah. seem like it would be metastasis. Or... Right. It turned out to be melloroiostosis yeah, of the spine. Believe it or not. Okay. Uh, Pratima? Uh, 46 year old. Uh, so we have a uh, x ray of the pelvis and a uh, lumbar spine. On the pelvis, uh, the femoral head and neck, uh, uh, there's a deformity of the proximal femoral head and neck uh, and uh, increased density in the proximal femoral head with cortical thickening of the shaft. Uh, yeah, and similar findings with uh, uh, increased. Uh, uh, what do you call it? density in the left uh, uh, iliac bone? Could this be melioriostosis again? Or, yeah, so Dr. Cruz is trying to show me the coarsening of the trabeculae uh, of the lumbar spine. So, Paget's versus, uh, um, yeah, so this looks like Paget's because the entire uh, uh, yeah, uh, femur is involved. Yeah. All right, so 68-year-old female with back pain. Um, so there's it's kind of a so there's a fracture of that uh, the L2 vertebral body with, re with retropulsion. It looks like there's edema extending through the posterior elements. Kind of same. There's increased marrow signal within the vertebral body superior to that, with also uh, abnormality in the posterior elements. Um, I given you know. And they both look kind of heterogeneous in appearance. Um, I'd be worried about like a pathologic fracture since they go through the. Okay. Yeah. There's Paget's disease and there's a fracture of Paget's disease. Yeah. Eric? 60 year old male with claudication and lumbago. Multiple axial lumbar images uh, showing some. It's like some. Osseous expansion, heterogeneity, I think possibly at least one level. Um, and uh, some major atrophy of the paraspinal muscles posteriorly, and then uh, the sagittals also showing some heterogeneous, heterogeneous marrow and flattening uh, loss of height at L4 and L5. Um, 
you know, this could just be severe osteopenia and degeneration um, and uh, on the, on the uh, AP also some uh, sort of lytic or cystic areas I mean, this could also be Paget's sort of uh, fairly advanced but there's there's a lot of kind of lytic areas and then uh, oh, yeah, there's cranium also some lytic areas uh, I guess you have to also think about metastatic disease Bones. Yeah. Anything else? Especially look, looking at something that likes this area of the of the skull, skull base, petrous bone. Um, okay. I was thinking this patient was a little old for that, but I guess not. Well, they may have had it when they were young too. Mm. Okay, Brian. You can see the coarse and trabecula and the kind of lobulated, uh, sharply marginated, lobulated appearance to it. Okay. Uh, sagittal images of the lumbar spine uh, again demonstrate uh, a salt and pepper lesion uh, in L3 vertebral body. Uh, looks like a hemangioma. Uh, uh, there's the coarsening of trabeculae, but oh, yeah. So here we have a T1 and T2 hyperintense mass within the posterior vertebral body extending into the pedicle. Um, as a sprite on both, um, that's that that's more uh, benign. Uh, those are more benign findings. Um, it only has fat in it. Yeah, it has fat, so it's probably a, a simple hemangioma. Yeah. Eric. 29-year-old male. Multiple sagittal images uh, showing some T1 and T2 is also showing some high signal intensity uh, in the L4 and L5 and S1 in particular bodies. Oh, um, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. So, this was a lymphangioma, so still in that similar category. Brian? Which osteolysis, which is really a benign, presu I mean, technically benign condition that just has a vascular proliferation and resorption of the bone. In this case, there's chylothorax, which was the uh, thickening that you uh, astutely pointed out in the uh, uh, thorax. Okay. Ten year old with low back pain for three months. Uh, so sagittal images of the lumbar spine demonstrate uh, uh, L3 vertebral body as having high uh, T2 and low T1 signal. Uh, uh, yeah, with an epidural uh, mass. Uh, right, right. Uh, and then I think these are follow-up radiographs which show uh, uh, like a compression fracture. Uh, uh, 
in a 10 month yeah, old kind of right so this could be eg considering the age of the patient uh, yeah. Sixty-year-old female with lumbar spondylosis. Uh, so it looks like there's a big spur kind of rising from the left uh, facet, kind of effacing the lateral recess and going into the subarticular zone. So they actually removed it and considered an osteochondroma. Mm. Eric? A uh, 60 year old female back and left leg pain of two years duration. There's a, a space, uh, there's, a, there's a, a mass, I guess you'd say, in the left uh, about a recess, posterior aspect at L34. Exhibits some high T2 signal. Um, also, actually, some high, high T1 signal. Um, has the look of a, um, of a uh, synovial cyst arising from the facet joint, possibly some protonaceous fluid accounting for the high T1 signal. Um, they also could have some calcification along the margins. Um, yeah, it turned out to be an osteochondroma, but uh, yeah. it's probably a little too bright on the T1. Uh, and uh, uh, this, it, anyway, it's, it, uh, you know, the vast majority of the time you're going to be dealing with a chronic, uh, partially calcified cyst in this area, but in this particular case, if you look at this, it's really contiguous with the cortex of the bone here, and it turned out to be an osteochondroma. And just some examples from Dr. Sue. Okay, Brian. All right, 44 year old male back pain, got frontal and lateral little grafts of the lumbar spine. There's some uh, height loss of uh, L3. Um, there may be central depression as well. Uh, there's heterogeneous density, but I can't tell if it's stimuli diagrams in the spine. MRI shows a uh, heterogeneous uh, high signal on the T2. Um, looks almost completely dark on uh, this. Uh, it looks vascular and well, actually vascular. It's got some. Uh, looks like it's a little bit of a appearance. Uh, spirit and spirit on which is their ABC. Um, giant cell with some ABC component. Um, less likely. And it's just a follow-up after yeah, surgery. Surgery and a little fluid in it. And it looks like there's some recurrence. Mm. So it turned out to be a chondromyxoid fibroma, but uh, what you saw, the aneurysmal bone cyst. And then they just have to be concerned when they do surgery as to what the underlying condition might be. Okay. Uh, so, 45 year old with a diagnosis of low grade chondrosarcoma 20 years ago of the left L4 transverse process. He went to Germany for nanotherapy and deep tissue therapy in China. So, now we have a uh, axial CT images of the uh, spine which demonstrate. What kind of images? Uh, sorry, uh, axial images, CT scan images of the, I guess, uh, yeah, the chest and uh, spine which demonstrate a lot of calcification. Uh, um, arising, uh, in, yeah. So this could be a recurrent chondrosarcoma, and this could be just calcification within it, and part of it could be post therapy. Uh, well, uh, it's a pretty subtle lesion here. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's just a probably yeah. a persistent chondrosarcoma that just wasn't properly treated. These are sad images through the L spine demonstrating just kind of a soft tissue mass posterior to the S2 uh, region. Looks like it's intradural extramedullary. And there's the lytic lesion. This is a bone lecture. Yeah. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> 
So it's extra joy, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Let's check my stone. The, the axial CT and the axial MR. Again, uh, what are the three lesions you always think about in the posterior elements? Uh, like TB, osteoid osteoma, ABC. And osteoblastoma. And osteoblastoma. Yeah, yeah, TB tends to be more in the vertebral bodies and in paraspinous large uh, soft tissue uh, abscesses, if you remember cold abscesses in the paraspinous going to multiple levels. Okay, Eric. Okay, this patient has actually a lot of T1, T2s. Left posterior elements, there is an expanse on mass with relatively intermediate to low T1 signal. And some intermediate to high T2 signal, also some muscle atrophy. So, uh, Seems to be centered in the, um, well, possibly in the pedicle, and the posterior elements on the stir, there is some increased signal as well. I mean, it's possible there could be another level of involvement, uh, possibly two levels of yeah. high signal. I, I think it was just one, but I agree. I, I see what you're saying. So, again, posterior elements, you think about, um, you know, without all fine detail, bony. Still think about uh, osteoblastoma, um, osteoblastoma, or EBC. Oh, sorry about um, that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This was just a little hemangioma. This was the lesion right there. <laughs> sorry about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it does look to be in the bone expansion. So again, possible osteoblastoma, osteoblastoma. It doesn't really have a look of EBC. Yeah, it's probably a little big and a little bit expansive for an osteoblastoma. Okay. Yeah, the, the the thing here that well, knows th that there is so. curvature, which you know can be positional, can be a lot of things, but you always think that that might be in kids that could be due to pain and and muscle contraction to try to try to be concerned about the pain. Yeah, there's transitional anatomy, so numbering might be a bit. Uh, so we okay. see a uh, fairly expansile mass that's surrounding the edema and the soft tissue and bone. Um, so this could be a uh, osteoblastoma again. Um, a CT there is a little looks as desperate and tight synchronized, so I understand what those yeah. Yeah, same in that group. Okay. Okay. Uh, thirteen year old with idiopathic uh, scoliosis with back pain. Initial radiograph. Uh, there is a curvature to the spine, uh, upper uh, Leave a convex. Um, okay, and then 14 months later, again there is a curvature, so it's less likely to be positional. Uh, it's probably related to pain. I'm trying to see if I can find something in the oh, pedicle. Yeah, right. So there is um, uh, uh, so there's a lesion at the T12. Uh, yeah, uh, centered in the posterior elements of the T12 with a. Oh, yeah, heterogeneous appearance on um, T1 and T2 images with surrounding soft tissue uh, edema. Uh, so posterior elements, again, uh, we think about an osteoblastoma or, uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. It's a 12-year-old boy with back pain, so it's kind of centered within the pedicle with soft tissue component extending. Well, it's expansile, and the soft tissue component extending into the paraspinal mass. It's heterogeneous. Um, it looks like it's aneurysmal almost. So maybe I'll go with the, get an aneurysmal bone cyst. Yeah, you can have solid ones, but you don't really see a fluid levels here. Yeah. Uh, or met. <laughs> Okay, Eric. Sixteen-year-old male, AP lumbar radiograph. Looks like some sclerosis and cortical thickening in the right pedicle of T12. Uh, also, some 
definition of that. Yeah, the left uh, most of your elements, uh, spinous process, pedicles. So this also looks somewhat cystic, possibly an ABC as well. Lots of fluid fluid levels. So I would definitely think about a pretty large expansile. ABC. Oitural with an MBA, uh, superior end plate L2 compression fracture, on, uh, other imaging, and um, yeah, I'm not really seeing the end plate fracture on the side of here. Uh, I mean, there's some irregularity of the uh, density there. On MR, we see heterogeneous uh, T1 and T2 signal. There is a slight superior end plate. Uh, Compression, it's high signal on stir. Um, gosh, my guess is this could be acutely traumatic, but something superimposed is certainly possible. Uh, ongoing pain, he's got uptake in a rib. Uh, I mean, he could have healing rib fracture uh, to account for that. You know, we see bulging vertebral margin, so we have to consider our mass here. Uh, metastasis, uh, our primary. Um, any instance. I'm not really sure what's making it. Uh, Whoa. <laughs> so that was a liposarcoma. I cut the whole thing out. Well, for a sarcoma, you're going to want a, a significant resection. Yeah. <laughs> Something you see every day. Thirty-one-year-old female with right leg and hip pain for three months. Mass found in the sacrum. No history of trauma. So there is a mass uh, in the sacrum which is uh, uh, bulging out. Uh, uh, pretty destructive, involving the entire sacrum. Um, so again, most, most yeah, of the most of the sacrum, right? Chancel tumor, yeah, I guess, yeah, plasma cytoma, right. <laughs> what, what, what else would you have in the differential here? Yeah, plasma cytoma, uh, yeah. Uh, but what's typical in the sacrum? Sacral coccygeal teratoma, I mean, it at the end of the age groups, um, what else? Uh, uh, I think chordomas, like the notochordal tumors, yeah. But I've been for many years, so there's a large, uh, Kind of you know, large mass in the region of the coccyx and it's expansile, there might be central. But it's probably sacral. For S3, oh, it may be down to the coccyx, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Kind of the same differential, like a. Okay. Chancel tumor you know, still. Same differential? <laughs> same diagnosis. <laughs> okay. So, chordoma is a rare below 30, giant cell tumor is 20 to 30. Calcifications in chordoma, you don't really get them in giant cells. And the signal characteristics aren't that reliable in my, my experience. Here's just some other chordoma and giant cells in that area. Okay, Eric. Uh, 60 year female sacrococcygeal pain in four years duration. Uh, another expansile mass, uh, looks like sacrum, possibly to coccyx. Lots of high T2 signal intensity. And There's a lot of, in, uh, lot of internal change. structure. It's probably a solid lesion. Yeah, so again, I think uh, 62. And so I would think about uh, giant cell tumor. Um, you could also think about chordoma. Yeah. Uh, maybe plasma cytoma or phoma or something like that. But, uh, yeah, and metastatic disease. But this was a chordoma. Okay. Uh, Brian, I think hey, it, uh, some of you said surgery. Images, there's a uh, looks like an epidural mass uh, posterior to some of the uh, metal artifacts. I don't definitely see enhancements. Um, depending on what was resected, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
it just looks like a recurrent mass of basic whatever yeah. it's restricted and the, oh and I guess we don't know how to spell either but anyway okay a 45 year old a female with low back and alternating lower extremity pain for one month so a lot of soft tissue uh, mass uh, around the vertebral body there on both sides uh, involving the posterior elements and extending into the uh, spinal canal so lymphoma con could be a possibility uh, considering the multi-compartment involvement uh, uh, the, so yeah vertebral bodies involved spinal canal posteriorly and I uh, guess uh, this is a different case of the same kind. Leukemia. Ah, so thyroid mass. Thyroid mass. So, uh, oh, okay. There we go. <laughs> Wait, single met from a thyroid. Oh, oh it's probably from the prior case. Is that yeah, from the prior case? A, sorry about that. I'm mixing the, oh, this is a met. Okay. Mm. Sorry about that. Okay, so this was, I'm sorry. That's this thyroid cancer. No, no that's not thyroid cancer. Met. Uh, so this is the third case, yeah. case. That was the met from thyroid. Yeah, you can ah, see it on the bone scan probably if it's hot or not. Yeah. Is it? Uh, yeah, there it is. Check and see how those got screwed up. Mm -hmm. okay. Oops. So this is thyroid cancer. <laughs> Pretty sure the one you had is not coming. Okay. Diffuse, diffuse marrow infiltrated disease. Okay, Brian. All right, uh, leg pain for a month. And we see. Um, well. It's a 59 year old male. There should be a lot more fat in the marrow space at that age for a male. And these the 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 nerve the nerves here the nerve roots are thick diffusely thickened. You can see that they're markedly thickened oh, here. Oh yes, you are right. Some of the axioms, especially the top right. Um, so this could be diffuse metastatic disease, uh, including a kind of sugar coating appearance of the clay uh, and they are enhancing here. Yeah. Looks like this is And what other what else might be in the differential? Uh, I think this is a new case. Uh, so axial and sagittal images of the spine. Uh, yeah. uh, looking at the marrow signal, uh, again, appears very heterogeneous. Uh, uh, 
Uh, and the nerve roots do appear prominent. Uh, uh, I mean, the nerves, yeah. Right. Uh, so again, a diffuse marrow infiltrative process. Um, so we are highlighting this particular region in the L3 vertebral body posteriorly, which is low on T2 and uh, enhances on the T1 post image. Okay. Uh, so right. Okay. Um, so this could be anything uh, <laughs> in terms of also oh, it's a met. Okay. This just shows a typical appearance of metastatic disease. And I, uh, oh, there's kind of expand bowing of the posterior yeah. cortex, mass effect. Right. So, uh, metastatic disease tends to involve the entire vertebral bodies, whereas uh, mm -hmm. fractures uh, in osteoporosis, you tend to get sparing of the corners. Metastatic disease it tends to have areas where you have more of a spherical lesion, uh, whereas uh, with osteoporosis and you have fractures, you get more of a planar type uh, linear appearance. And one of the best findings uh, on regular MR is bowing of the posterior cortex, which is weakening of the bone with plastic deformity, which is very characteristic of metastatic disease and is not characteristic of osteoporosis. So those can be very helpful with more modern imaging. Uh, people like to do diffusion-weighted imaging where you get diffusion re restriction and neoplastic disease where you don't in uh, uh, osteoporotic fractures. So I think there are a number of ways. But even with regular imaging, if you see these findings, this is hi uh, highly accurate in, in indicating that these are due to metastatic disease. And this more of the same. Okay, Eric. Hey, Julia Romeo with prostate cancer and comments on uh, destructive process in the sacrum midline, the left midline, and certainly we consider metastatic disease in the prostate with some sclerosis of the bone. And, uh, oh, okay. Follow up exam and MRI showing multiple levels of uh, involvement, pretty much diffuse involvement, well, involvement at nearly every level the lumbar spine and then expansion in the sacrum. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. And just uh, breast metastases. And as you know, there's some tumors like breast tend to give sclerotic type mats, which we're seeing in this particular case. Thyroid can do the same thing. And here we can see actually diffuse uh, involvement throughout the uh, dura. 30 year old radiologist. Is anyone? Yeah, still your turn. New onset back pain. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a hypo intense, well, T1 hypo intense, kind of stir hyper intense mass in the uh, pedicle. Yeah, it's kind of poorly defined. Um, so I'd be worried about like a, a MET or primary malignancy. Yeah, it's in the typical location right here near the, near the pedicle where it, uh, just like the METs tend to lodge in the metathesis of the bone because that's where the small capillaries are. That's the uh, same. This is the, basically the, the metaphyseal region of the vertebral body, which mm. is a big common location for mass. So bone scan, maybe there might be a rib lesion, CT, so it's hypodense. Some, like, maybe, yeah. Or most, most have small cell lung. Oh, yeah. Okay, uh, so uh, initial images uh, demonstrating a lesion in uh, yeah, uh, L2, uh, and that progressed to become a compression fracture. Looks pathologic on the uh, yeah, posterior retropulsion and uh, bulging of the vertebral body. Uh, so it could right. be metastatic or it could be primary. Yeah, this probably also shows some extension of the mass outside the bone, which right. obviously is a very yes. worrisome sign for uh, neoplastic disease. You're more and more scars. Yeah. And there are other areas too. Yeah. Hope so. Hey, Eric. Uh, 57 year old female, low back and both leg pain, one year. There's no trauma. Uh, 
um, there's some osteopenia, multiple levels of um, well, thoracolumbar junction, some vertebral body flattening, height loss, and on the MR, lots of marrow replacement, multiple levels. It's like metastatic disease, and uh, there's a, a flattening of the T12, lots of expansion, and uh, soft tissue mass in the surrounding paraspinal regions, and also approaching on the spinal canal. Gamma it could be uh, something like myeloma. Yeah. Bad case of myeloma. Okay, Brian. Okay, 71 year old male with uh, discs that are or excuse me, uh, vertebral body that are producing darker than the uh, discs. And it's bright on, on T1, which T2 fat that is slightly hyper intense. Uh, and the process involves the uh, Forty-three year old with increasing lower extremity neuropathy. Um, so plain X-ray demonstrating, I think, kind of a model appearance to the pelvic bones. Um, I'm looking at the spine to see. Yeah. Okay. Um, so sagittal images demonstrate two lesions in the um, upper lumbar spine. Uh, that's low on T1. Uh, yeah, uh, and again, uh, another one in S2. Uh, so this could be, considering multiple uh, lesions, this could be metastatic disease. Uh, uh, these appear sclerotic meds. Uh, no real enhancement, um, and it's sclerotic on the CT scan. Uh, so renal, thyroid, uh, prostate. He's pretty young for prostate, but yeah, uh, these are the possible etiologies. He has an increasing lower extremity neuropathy. Mm -hmm. uh, increasing, right? So we can't really. This time his endocrine function was normal, but they they checked it. Okay. PET scan, positive serum, so serum proteins that you'll think of. Uh, negative, negative PET. Oh. Uh, this is Poem syndrome, which is rarer but similar to multiple myeloma, but it's a different cell type. Okay. And it tends to uh, cause really more multiple organ failure uh, with organomegaly. Neuropathy is often a, a, a progressive neuropathy as a finding. And you tend to get, if you treat this, the neuropathy tends to not completely get better. So it's important to make the diagnosis early before you start losing a lot of neurologic function. You have the monochromal protein and skin changes. Uh, <clears throat> and the treatment for this really is a bone marrow transplant. Okay. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's really a, a neoplastic disease. So we see sclerotic lesions in the skeletal system? Yeah, in this, in this case, which aren't in the poems, uh, but uh, uh, Bone, dis bone disease is common with this. Well, the biopsy wouldn't be diagnosis, and but be wouldn't be diagnostic in this case. So uh, you, you really have to work the patient up. These could be multiple bone islands uh, because the, the bone scan and the PET were negative on this. So, uh, but the, he, the patient really presented with a very significant progressive peripheral neuropathy. Uh, so uh, bone lesions with a progressive peripheral neuropathy. In this case, uh, he didn't have any of the other findings but uh, it, it seemed uh, uh, that, that this was a more likely diagnosis. One of the better places to treat this is at Mayo Clinic. This individual actually went to the Mayo Clinic and they confirmed the diagnosis there and he was treated with a uh, 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 stem cell transplant and uh, appears to be completely fine now. 
So. So, thirty-one-year-old male with fever and pancytopenia. So there kind of there looks like there's a diffuse marrow replacement. You have loss of the marrow fat. Uh, yeah, so we, we, we have loss of all the vertebral body fat. And oh, it looks very in, increased sclerosis on the uh, on the uh, it looks very dense on these things. Uh, CT, so maybe like osteopetrosis. Well, osteopetrosis. Or, oh, okay, myelofibrosis. Soft tissue mass with lots of heterogeneity in the right paraspinal region, adjacent to the kidney. Uh, may even be contiguous with the kidney. Um, certainly could be a lymph limit thing, so I'm telling you. It's in, in the wrong lecture. <laughs> 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 That's not part of the bone. Kidney's a bone. Okay. Uh, Brian. So remember, there are other things that can give multiple lesions. You know, this this was sarcoidosis. Uh, weight loss and general weakness in a 52-year-old female. So there's a sclerotic lesion in the vertebral body, uh, cervical. Uh, okay. Uh, and there's another one in the uh, sternum anteriorly, um, and there's a calcified in it. No, or is that that's the aorta? Also, there's more lesions lower down that are calcified in the ribs as well. Um, mm, yeah, sternum, multiple bone lesions, small. Um, uh, could be meds. Uh, this looks like meds. Uh, or it could be uh, what else calcifies in the bone? I don't know. Uh, lymph node biopsy done. Could be another uh, sarcoid case, TB. Yeah. 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 See, t tomorrow, I think I'm going to have to leave early to go to a meeting. So I think our next meeting will be on Wednesday. Okay. Okay? Thanks, Dr. Chris. Yep. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thanks. Yep. The organizer has ended the session. And